Welcome to Worship with McClure United Church. So glad you could join us. This is the second Sunday in Advent, the Sunday where we focus on peace. So glad you could join us. The McClure United Church is a church that does its very best to offer a warm welcome to everyone, as well as a church that does its best to care for others. You know, I kind of thought that this Christmas season would be a little bit quieter seeing we aren't meeting in our church building. But holy smokes, I got a package of ad, uh, announcements here that I need to share with you. And uh, before I do so, I just really want to encourage folks to go to the website to get the exact details on all of these announcements. There's lots going on in our church family. So nice that we are continuing to be church, uh, even though we can't meet in our building. Um, so some announcements. One, uh, today, uh, folks are collecting for the EGADS ministry. Uh, EGADS, of course, is an organization in our city that cares for youth at risk. And we're collecting all kinds of things for them uh, to help them have a good Christmas season and to make their lives a little easier. So we're collecting today at uh, between 11 and noon and Monday between 5 and 6.30. So we are needing things like deodorant, toothbrushes, feminine hygiene products, toques, headbands, gloves and scarves. And of course, a financial donation is always welcome. And the cash can, uh, cash can also be uh, passed on at, during those times as well to folks who know how to take good care of that and make sure it's safe. So we have the collection for EGADS going on. We also have a Blue Christmas service that will be uh, shared with folks on Wednesday, December the 9th at 7 o'clock. You're welcome to open that worship experience and uh, take it in. It's a time to acknowledge that Christmas is sometimes a really hard season for many of us. It's a time when our losses are felt more deeply and we need to acknowledge that, that it's okay not to be merry. And uh, so please take in that worship service when your heart is ready for it. Also, there's a women's gathering coming up this Saturday. So if you're uh, someone who thinks that they might enjoy an opportunity to have a conversation and a little prayer time with other women of McClure United Church, please send me an email and I will make sure that you get the Zoom link and you can be a part of that gathering. There's Christmas cookies. Uh, in the offering here, uh, an opportunity to, to donate some of your good baking and an opportunity to order some of that good baking. And so Ebba Eggleston and Marlene Kells are organizing that event. Again, check the website for the details. Another item that is coming up is a wonderful concert. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so so that our joy may be complete is the name of the event. Our band, our Sacred Sounds Band, is a part of that event. And there is tickets available. What you do is you uh, go to our website, get the information about how to purchase a ticket. Uh, when you purchase a ticket, you get to say where you want the money that you have just spent on the ticket to go. And so you can choose our church, another church, or one of our really important and critical ministries in the city, like the Integrated Community Ministries or the Northern Saskatchewan Hospital Chaplaincy. Those would be my two favorite, but I'll trust that you will know how to, to care for your own money. So, and then you get to enjoy this amazing concert. And so please uh, look that up on the website. Also uh, know that we have a prayer tree. A prayer tree has been attached to one of the pillars outside the church. And we're really hoping that people will take advantage of that tree, a way of take, bringing, bringing a piece of cloth, a piece of ribbon, uh, a string, tying it to the mesh that you'll find there as a way of offering a prayer. Prayer for your church family, your church community, and for the people in McClure Place and in Amy's Place. And just a way of physically getting out there and making your prayers public in an interesting and creative way. And so please, if you're driving by the church, bring a piece of ribbon, offer a prayer, and tie it to the tree. The uh, information about uh, Friday coffees is also on the website. We're still continuing to meet Friday mornings at 10 o'clock. Everyone's welcome. Just send an email to either Laura or myself and we'll make sure that you get in on that Zoom conversation. 
information about Christmas Eve is out. Um, and you'll find that on the website too. You'll find that at five o'clock, uh, there will be a release of a worship service that includes a pageant. And at seven o'clock, there'll be another release of a worship service that is perhaps a little more traditional and it's, it's being with lots of carols. And then at nine o'clock, we're going to invite folks to join Laura and I uh, for a communion. It's been our tradition for many years to have Christmas, uh, have communion on Christmas Eve. And so we're going to try it on Zoom. So please, if you'd like to join us for communion, uh, look for the Zoom link on the website. And as always, Laura and I want to be available to you folks to support and care for you. And so please don't hesitate but to phone us if you're liking a phone call or you know someone who might appreciate a call. Well, I think that's all the announcements. Still a busy Christmas, which is very traditional for us at McClure. But now let's just quiet our spirits and open our hearts to the movement of God. Let us worship together. I dream of the first pitch of opening season. I dream of a laundry day where each sock finds its mate. I dream of family home for the holidays. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with the windows down. These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of conversations across party lines. I dream of more bridges and less walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. Today, we light the candle of peace. May it remind us that there is another way. Amen. And now let us pray. O oh God, John the Baptist said, prepare the way. May we now prepare our minds for worship. Help us to silence our inner critic, to let go of busy thoughts, so that we are able to make way to hear you speak. 
May we now prepare our hearts for worship. Help us to be open to all our emotions, to feel what we feel so that we may open ourselves to be moved. And may we now prepare our bodies for worship. Help us to take in the scent, sight, and feel of whatever space we are in so that we are able to breathe in your mercy and breathe out your love. May we now prepare our souls for worship. Help us to bring our full selves into this space, to wear our hearts on our sleeves so that we are able to trust that even now you are here. May we prepare the way to worship you, O holy God. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, God our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, here we are, the second Sunday in Advent. Seems just the other day, I was thinking Christmas was a long way off and I had lots of time to plan and get ready. But here we are already, marking the second Sunday in Advent, the Sunday of peace. I don't know about you, but I sure could use a good dose of peace right now. A dose of silent night. All is calm, all is bright. I could use a good portion of the beauty that comes with Christmas the light, the excitement, the energy, joyful anticipation, 
piece of candlelight and the extra good cheer. Oh, let's face it, it has been hard to find these things in the past eight months. As I anticipate goodies and surprises and sugar plums, I come to this Sunday scripture passage in hope. And I find it rather disappointing. Though it is clearly a Christmas passage, there's no joyous anticipation or excitement in this gospel lesson. Most scholars believe the Gospel of Mark was the first gospel to be written. It is thought that somewhere around 70 CE, the writer of Mark clear, feared that those who were eyewitnesses to the life and works of Jesus would die before anyone prepared a written testimony about his life. And quite frankly, the second coming didn't seem to be coming. So Mark wrote in a hurry, giving a bare bones account of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. In Mark's gospel, there are no shepherds, no magi, no angels, no stars, no birth story. Just an odd looking man dressed in camel's hair and a leather belt with locusts and honey on his breath, baptizing people in a river. Mark's story of Jesus begins not with his birth, but with his baptism. And Mark begins the story of Jesus' baptism by using ancient words, words of the prophet Isaiah. See, I will send a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. It helps to know that the custom of the day was that a, when a king visited any part of his realm, there was a messenger that was sent out before him to prepare the way, to announce the king was coming and to get everybody ready. According to the gospel writer Mark and the people to whom he wrote, John was therefore a very big deal. He was preparing the hearts of the men and women of Israel for the new king, the king who would rule the kingdom and their hearts. John the Baptist is a very important figure in biblical history. John is one of the very few persons mentioned in all of the Gospels and in other historical writings of the period. We know that Jesus and John the Baptist were cousins and about the same age. John the Baptist was older by a few months, but there are many parallels in our lives. Both experienced miraculous births, John from a woman way past childbearing age, and Jesus from a virgin. Their births were publicly announced affairs, and there was rejoicing at their births. There were interesting and unique aspects to their naming and circumcision in the temple. There was the public presentation and prophecy of their destiny for both of them. In their early years, there was a description of their growth as young children into adulthood. And there was a martyred death at the hands of worldly authorities for both of them. Yet in every case, Jesus is described as greater than John. However, John was an important person, integral to explaining the story of Jesus. John announced to all that the king was coming and by the time he baptized Jesus, hordes of people had come into the wilderness to listen to his bizarre and powerful preaching. And most of them had been baptized by him as a sign of repentance. John the Baptist proclaimed that someone was coming, someone so spectacular that it was not enough to simply wait for him to arrive. John called upon the people to be honest with themselves, to step back from their daily routines and prepare their hearts to receive the one whom God was sending, one whom would redeem them and offer them new life. John challenged the people to repent and embrace what God's gift would bring. Now, some asked if John was indeed the Messiah, and of course he replies, no, one is coming who is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie his sandals. John the Baptist was the witness, 
the one to tell everyone of the coming of the Messiah. John was critical to the story for he was the first to understand who Jesus was and what Jesus had come to do. Perhaps it's kind of obvious that I've been thinking a lot about John and I've been think and I've been thinking aren't all births miraculous? You only have to see a newborn infant to know that. We were all born of very human mothers, just as Jesus and John were. It is likely that people rejoiced in our birth, and many were told of our arrival. It was a public affair. A goodly number of us were presented in our temples or public places for blessing and anointing, and most of us, like John, and at times like Jesus, wander in the wilderness of this earthly life. We have experienced our fair share of wilderness, particularly these last eight months. Some of us have lost sight of what is right and good and what it means to care for our neighbors. We have witnessed the murder of unarmed black men and women in the United States, United States, which has opened to those of us in Canada the unjust treatment perpetuated towards First Nations people. We have come to understand that pandemics unfairly affect those of them on the margins of society more profoundly than others. We've had to revisit the way we care for our older adults and our elders to ensure that they are well cared for and not a means to a profit. We have been mired in the darkness of refusing to notice and care for the least, those that appear on our streets and those who live with issues of mental health. We have seen with new eyes the plight of our planet and, it, and its exploitation in the name of money and wealth. Indeed, we have experienced much wilderness these past few months. Friends, what if we are to be like John the Baptist, crying in the wilderness against evil and injustice, we, who like John, miraculous in our birth, born of very human women, celebrated upon our birthing, blessed and anointed, who have walked in the wilderness. What if we, knowing full well we are not the Messiah and we cannot save the world, but what if we are the ones to bear witness? Bear witness to the one whose way can save the world. Bear witness to the teachings and the life lessons of Jesus of Nazareth, which if embraced, will issue in people living lives of radical love, which will bring peace with justice and joy. Perhaps this year, amidst the gift wrapping and the candy making, perhaps this year we shall pass on the Christmas sweater and put on a metaphorical camel hair jacket with a nice leather belt, and we shall bear witness to those who need to hear, the powerful and the helpless, the strong and the weak. Perhaps this Christmas, we shall be the ones who must bear witness to the one who calls us out of the wilderness to a life of love and forgiveness, joy and grace. Let us prepare the way. Amen.
now we are invited to join our hearts and minds as one as we offer ourselves to God in this time of prayer. So let us pray. Dreaming God, in this time of prayer, may we open our hearts and minds to your dreams for us, for our communities, for the world. May we connect our own dreams with yours so that together we can live into being a better, more peace-filled world. Now we pray our dreams for a world that is waiting, a world that has lived so long in darkness. We wait, we prepare, we anticipate your coming. With hope-filled gratitude, we prepare to celebrate once again your light coming to us, to shine on us and through us. And as we prepare our hearts for the birth of Jesus during this waiting time, may we begin to peek through the darkness, making space for your dreams to enter in. The world is waiting, God. We wait with dreams for a better world where everyone has a roof over their heads, clothes on their backs, and enough food to satisfy their hunger. We wait for a world where everyone is able to be safe and secure, where they can close their eyes and have a restful sleep, not worrying about what the morning will bring. As we dream of these things, help us to do our best to bring them to life. There is so much to do that has been left undone. Give us the courage to step out in faith and make your dreams and ours a reality. We offer our prayers for all the elected officials who form our governments. May they witness your dreams too. Dreams of a world of compassion where greed is set aside for the sake of those on the margins, those who are oppressed, those who are ignored, left out, and abused. Help us to be bold in our faith as we stand up for what is right and just. We hold in prayer now those who are sick, who are grieving, who are lonely, afraid, anxious. Touch them with your healing spirit that they may also be filled with the peace that comes with your dreams for them, for their loved ones, and for your world. Holy God, may we not hold on to our dreams as if they will be easily shattered, but may we be given the courage, the strength, and the wisdom to live our dreams faithfully, boldly, and without apology, knowing that our dreams for a better world for ourselves and all your people come from you. Connect us to you and help us prepare the way for greater peace. Holding all these prayers, we offer them to you, O oh God, knowing that you hear our prayers and in your love you do answer. And we pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught his friends and his followers, saying together, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, let us go into this world that God loves and bless it with compassion. Speak against injustice and act with integrity. May the passion of God's prophets encourage you. May the life of Jesus the Christ be your example. May the Holy Spirit fill you with courage and love. Let us prepare the way for the coming of our God. Amen. Thank you.